I want to invite you to try on a different way of thinking. I'm going to teach you that if you will learn this principle, it will change your personal relationships, it will change your business relationships, and it will make you money. It's a very simple principle. All I'm asking you to do is try it on. If you don't like it, what did you lose? Nothing. If you do like it, what could you gain? an amazing business 25 million dollars agent two years ago today two years later 83 million dollar production two years guys tell me we do not have the right people up here and by the way that's their buyer and seller I haven't even started with the 30 plus houses every single year that they actually go into the market into the field eyeball to eyeball with who is buying and selling and that's the houses that they flip and that's what you're here to learn are you ready say yes again please welcome one of the superstars that I think is in the buy fix and flip business now he is an extremely busy person. So what I want to do is make sure that you have a contact because you will have questions, not here, but when you get in the car. Write this phone number down, please. 951. 951-616-4401. 9516164401 and that's for any questions that you may have we want you to have a resource this couple is a who's who in real estate the man that you're about to see has been presented on the cover of time magazine but today he's not taking care of the globe he's taking care of you please welcome andrew and annette warburton warburton properties First and most important, this is Annette Warburton. <laughs> she is the brains of the operation. I want to ask you a question up front. And if you know me well, you know I get straight to the point. How many of you are completely content with your lives? You've got masses of money. You absolutely love showing property to difficult buyers and sellers. You're looking forward to showing property on the day you die. You love it so much. You have no desire to make any more money whatsoever, but you've just come here just in case you might hear something. Or on the other hand, how many of you would actually like to cause a permanent transformation in your life? Can I see a show of hands? So it's not what we hear, it's how we listen to what we hear. It's not what we see, it's how we see. And we're gonna talk about that today first and foremost. We're gonna go into the nitty gritty, nuts and bolts of exactly what you need to do and I want you to write this down to make a million dollars in two years flipping property. That's what we have just done on the side as a part-time business in the last two years. How do you make a million dollars in two years flipping property? Is there anybody in this room who's interested in doing that? May I see a show of hands? Now, leave your hands up. So you're interested in it. How many of you are committed to the time, effort, that it's going to take to make that happen? Let me see a show of hands. Look around at each other. That's what it's gonna take, is that drive and determination. The resources here today, you're gonna to have the strategy, how to do it. You're gonna have, I'm what they call a modeler. So to me, I like to invent things to do, create a structure around it, and then it's a model that we can reproduce. We're gonna share that model with you today. But at the same time as having the model, you have to have the money. That's why Ryan is here in the background. Uh, have any of you been to Europa Village in Temecula? Anybody been there? Let me see a show of hands. He raised the money for it. So this man knows how to make money happen, okay? All right, so honey, anything you wanna say at the start? You are fabulous. All right, let's go for it. 
not my part yet. Here we go. I'm going to just get right down to nitty gritty. Get ready to have your mind blown. The million dollar breakdown is very, very simple. You want to flip 20 homes a year and make $25,000 on each home. 20 times 25 is 500. That's $500,000. That's your target. You want 20 homes at $25,000 profit. You can do 10 homes at 40, but in this market, it's very difficult to find $40,000 net margin properties. I'm a realist. I find 25K net margin. Sometimes we'll get lucky, we'll do a 60, we'll do a 70, you'll see one today that you'll do an 80. But I build the model around what is conservative, and then you bank what you do on top of that. So first of all, create a model. When you've created the model, schedule your key activities around that model, and then execute. It's that simple. So create a model, Schedule key activities and execute. There are three aspects of the flipping business that are crucial. Obviously, you've got to buy it, right? Then you've got to fix it. Then you've got to sell it. Otherwise, it's all theory. Here's how you take theory into reality. By the way, how many of you would your life dramatically changed if you netted a million dollars in the next 24 months? Can I see a show of hands? I want to ask you a question. How many of you have been selling real estate in this room for more than 10 years? More than 20. Can I ask you experienced realtors, how easy was it to save a million dollars cash? <laughs> exactly. There are three aspects to flipping properties. One is acquisition, the other is construction, and the third is disposition. Now in our business, it is, and Rick introduced Annette as my wife, which is absolutely correct. It is absolutely not a husband and wife team. It is a wife and lucky husband team. And you're going to see as this evolves uh, in the next two hours, you're going to see all of the detail that Annette handles every day that makes this thing work for us. Most of this conversation is going to be about acquisition. You know why? Because if you don't have a property, the rest is just theory. How many of you are thinking in this room, this is all very well, Andrew, but you can't find flips in this market? Can I see a show of hands? Honestly, who thought that? Well, you're lying. <laughs> Most people think that. Oh, my gosh, it's so hard to find them. It is hard to find them. But do you remember the model? What's the model? 20 times 25. Around that model, you create a strategy. That strategy you then have to execute. I execute that strategy at 6.30 in the morning while Jonathan's getting ready for school and he and I sit down and eat breakfast together. I'm looking at properties. I execute that strategy at 12, 1 o'clock when we finished our team meeting. Uh, all the agents are out working and I'm looking at properties. I do that strategy at 5 o'clock, 6 o'clock when everybody's gone home. I'm engaged in that strategy. Why? Because I don't see what's in front of me right now. I see what's in front of me out there. Right? And what's out there is the model. Let's look at acquisition together. The first thing that you have to decide when you're acquiring properties is what is your geo footprint? Now, we just came from five days with Annette's mom and her sister sitting in the front here, visiting us from Kansas on a lovely house on the beach in Oceanside. And we just spent five days there. I know Oceanside very well. Huge opportunity. You can buy there a um, single family home on the bluff for about four million. And you can fix it up for a mill and it's going to be worth six and a quarter mil. But I said, first of all, you've got to establish a geo footprint. Part of your geo footprint is it's got to be affordable. So can you do that four mil and drop down 400 grand, which is your skin in the game? And if not, you pick the wrong geo footprint. Pick the right geo footprint. And I would encourage most of you in this room to start where we started, which is properties around three, 400 acquisition. You want to exit in the conforming loan limits because there's more people who can buy. So our strategy is buy where our resale is within the conforming loan limits. If you don't know what a conforming loan limit is, raise your hand. Okay, that means where you can, um, there's, a, there's a price line, if you like, in each county where you go from a government loan or government back loan or Fannie Mae Freddie back, back, uh, back loan to a jumbo loan. There are less jumbo buyers. So let's go for this. Geo footprint. Based on affordability, 
based on contractor avail availability, and based on the time to supervise. I want you to think about this. You need to be at each property once a week. So if you've got one in Oceanside, and you've got one in Indio, and you've got one in Lake Arrowhead, and you've got one in El Centro, you've got a problem. So establish your geo footprint, write it down. You need to leave here today. We don't care, no offense, if you're wowed by Andrew. You will be wowed by Annette. What we care about is that you leave here with a model that will change your life because we're into helping others change their lives. Your geo footprint is affordability, contract availability, time to supervise. Now, to acquire, here's a, just a baseline we're gonna start from. Build yourself a group of agents who will send properties to you. Build yourself a wholesaler network. Now, we'll talk a lot about wholesalers as this goes on. Not my favorite group of people, although if you are a wholesaler here, I absolutely love you. Please send me a property. <laughs> <clears throat> Investment clubs. Tommy, where's Tommy? One of the best title managers I've ever experienced in my 30-year career, where's Tommy? What's the name of the app they need to load onto their phone, Tommy? Meetup. Meet up. tell them real quick. Uh, you'll be able to network with bird dogs, wholesalers, um, different networking groups in regards to real estate investing, uh, all on Meetup. Most of it's all online, but they do have actual physical meetings as well uh, that you can attend. Download Meetup, it's an app, load it onto your phone, Put in your zip code and you will see all the meetings in the area where wholesalers meet, where flippers meet. You'll meet financial people there. You don't need them because of Ryan. They're all there meet up. So your investment clubs, they're all on meet up. Auction sites, I'm gonna give you the top six auction sites where you can go and search for properties. You go, Andy, they go over price right now. Let me tell you something. I am not a fatalist. I've lived through three ups and downs in real estate in America. I came to America with $1,000, a wife who didn't work and a baby. And I learned how to work extremely fast and I haven't stopped working since and I won't stop working until the day I die because it is my interpretation of the American culture. I work hard. Nobody has given me a cent. Maybe 500 bucks is the biggest gift I've had my entire life because I believe in hard work. I believe in using your intellect and I believe in gathering around you a team of people who want the same thing that you do. Auction sites. Auction sites are going to, going to become prevalent in the next two or three years. Are we going to see a saturation of foreclosures? If you're watching garbage videos on YouTube, stop it. You need to read intellectual people and what they report about. Companies that are uh, liable to the stock exchange, who can't just say garbage because they want to be a cool bra uh, YouTube hit of the second. Go to CoreLogic, study them. Go to the Case-Shiller Index, study that. Study the indices that truly teach you what is going on in the macroeconomic environment of this country. But the auction sites are gonna become more relevant. Next, landing pages and pay-per-click. You wanna reach people who are the general public sending homes. This is a whole, I could spend two hours just on this. How to build out landing pages and do pay-per-click advertising. Build yourself relationship with attorneys, family law attorneys, probate attorneys, bankruptcy attorneys, and now I'm going to come to my favorite one, 2011. 2011, I was buying properties for people who were flipping properties. And I met some friends, uh, one gentleman who stayed a friend now since 2011. And the company we were working for is a hedge fund. The hedge fund said, don't bother with going to the MLS. There are no properties on the MLS. We look at them all every day. By 2012, I had personally purchased 307 properties off the MLS for that organization in one year, 307. Now, I drove end to end of the state of California, but I bought 307 properties. To this day, 70% of the properties that we find are on the MLS. We have 11 properties under construction right now, nine of them came from the MLS. The MLS is a whole category. We're gonna do in-depth trainings, and you'll see uh, that we'll advertise it to you and give you information. Uh, but the MLS, how you use hashtags in the MLS, how you use asterisk, comma, asterisk, how you set up certain searches that will reveal to you the most likely properties to flip on a day-to-day -day basis. Now, if you're going to buy flips, you have to know how to assess their value. We do two levels of valuation. One is called micro-valuation. The other is called macro-valuation. By the way, has anybody learned anything yet? You feel hyped or you feel informed? Hopefully, okay, well, that's good. I'm kind of the informing guy. Microvaluation. I get hyped every time I see her, but you know, that's the way we go. So, we're getting to construction in a minute. This is the boring part. Microvaluation. 
don't make a mistake so many flippers make, and that is they will micro-value a property without a macro context. That's a problem. So avoid the problem and listen to what I'm sharing with you. Micro-valuation, you're going to start with what we call the exit appraisal value and work backwards. So somebody comes to you and says, one, two, three, Main Street is a great deal. It's $260,000. It's worth $260 million. That's a wholesaler for you right? They're going to come to you and tell you how much that property is worth. The first thing I want to do is I want to do a micro valuation. So I'm going to go in and look at that property. First of all, a quick search. I'll do the AVM in dollars per square foot. AVMs. Anybody know what an AVM is? Automated valuation model. CoreLogic is the biggest on the planet. Zillow does it. Redfin does it. A whole bunch of sites do it. It's an automatic valuation model based on public records, not based on the fact that Betty just put in new flooring, not based on the fact that Sam has done custom wall treatments because he can't see that. It's just based on the criteria that in the county recorders indexed or, or our public information. So an AVM will give you a rough idea of what the house is worth. A lot of people come to me and say, Andy, that house up the street is uh, 796 square feet and it's sold at 200 bucks a foot. And I've got an 1,800 square foot house. Multiply 1,800 times 200, you've got the value of the home. That is a very rudimentary way of valuating property. You're going to lose money super fast. Super fast. A lot of realtors think dollar per square foot is the name of the game. It's not. It is one minor contributing factor. Do your microvaluation. Look at the unique features of your property. You know, all the normal things, lot size, view, pool or not, location, schools, is it in a primary school district, so on and so forth. You need to look at the value unique features. You need to look at the neighborhood comps. When you put that together, and I would encourage you in this market, only use comps within the last 90 days. You are going to know once you've done that, what a good shot at your exit price is. If you are here in your general public, and you're not a realtor. You need to know realtors before you leave here. Not that part-time kind. Not that I'm really proud of myself kind and you can't reach me on the weekend. Not that, oh, I'm really special. Look at my picture on Facebook. The kind that work their butts off. The kind that are out there for you digging and looking for properties. The kind of realtor that works hard, knows the market, grinds it out. That's the kind of realtor you need. And we have realtors on our team who are exactly that. We do have some part-time realtors. They have a struggle with us. You know why? Because we have a work ethic. Microvaluation. Now, after microvaluation, you need to do what's called a macro valuation. So let me make that really simple. Don's brought me a property. He does it all the time. Makes commission when he brings me a property. Don brings me a property. We check it out, what the value is. We go, okay, we think the exit price on that is 360000 It's a three-bedroom, two-bath home on a 7,500-square-foot lot. The next thing I will do, if it's in, say, Riverside, I'll pretend that I'm a buyer and I'll say, search. Three bedrooms or more, two baths or more, 7,000 square feet or more, city of Riverside under, say my exit price is 450,000. And it will give me a return. If there's 16 properties out there that match the criteria of my property that are not sold, guess what? It ain't worth 450. I don't care how much you prove to me on your street that your micro valuation is accurate. If your micro valuation is not supported by the macro valuation, you're gonna lose money. How many people in this room to lose money? We're just going to come and hear Andrew and Annette today because we want to lose money. It's about making money. So your macro evaluation is contextualizing your micro approach to what the value of that property is. Does everybody get that? Beware of aberrations. You want to write that down. Then go to Google and say, what the hell is an aberration? Watch out for aberrations. Every home in the neighborhood is 12 to 1,500 square feet. You got somebody who's lived there for 40 years, got super enthusiastic about it, added on a 1,000 square foot in, uh, addition, and it's not 1,400 square feet, it's 2,400 square feet. And so you want to get more for it. You probably won't. It's going to be limited, your upside, because you're overbuilding for the neighborhood. All right, valuation. Here's some valuation guidelines. I want to encourage you to adjust comps. So you've got a three bedroom, two bath, and it's 1,400 square feet. Adjust comps that are within 20% of the subject. So if you're looking at 1,500 square feet, you want something that's up to 18 or down to 12. Be very careful, use a 900 square foot comp on a 1,500 square foot property. When you're skilled, you can do it, but it's a pitfall. 
So what you want to be sure of when you value is you adjust comps within 20% of the subject. Next, compare the age and style. This happens all the time. We love to buy homes in Palm Springs. We have one going now in Cathedral City. We have one going in Indio. We have one going in La Quinta. Can't even keep up with them all. We love to buy in the desert. Style is everything in the desert. Let me give you an example. Ryan, stand up for a second, would you? So you could take me and you could get me a suit, do my hair, brush my teeth, give me a ring, and it's going to be a 65-year-old guy with a suit and a ring. Or you could take Ryan and give him a suit and a ring and brush his teeth and... <laughs> but you get my point. It doesn't matter how much you clothe me or polish me up. I'm never going to look like Ryan. I'm okay with that, but it's not going to happen. Some houses are like that. One very quick example. I'm watching time here. We're doing a property right now on Terrace Street. It should close escrow today. Funding's happening while we're talking right now. We bought the home at five. It's in escrow at 770,000. Doug right here set open houses. A lot of the agents on our team work a lot of these properties and sit these open houses. My point is this. It's in a mid-century modern area. But the house was built in 1975. And in 1975, architects literally had massive seizures nationwide. <laughs> in that seizure period, they had terrible bowel problems. And with the bowel problems, all taste in architecture was extracted from their bodies. So when you look at this 1975 house, it had this monstrosity of an entryway to it with like these column things. And it had like wings on the side of the house, like they were dreaming that one day they would fly away with, I don't, God knows who, right? And it just looked but ugly, sorry ladies, but it did. It looked just awful, right? But before the gym, that is. So we looked at it and what did I tell you? Don't see what you see, see what you see. If you're running your life seeing what you're seeing, you're not going to get where you want to be. You have to see what you see. And what you see isn't yet. Train yourself to do that where you can see what isn't yet. When Annette and I looked at that house, Annette, architecture graduate, Kansas State University, remodeled most of the restaurants in Kansas, phenomenal design skills. We stood at the curb and we talked about each other and we said, you know what, if you cut off those wings and you knock off that thing on the front and you do a lateral wood design on the front door and Annette picks this amazing color on the front door, we found this custom front door. You look at it now, it's a mid-century modern house. So now we have an architectural style that fits the neighborhood and we were able to get $150,000 more than a house that looked like it was built in the 70s. So make sure that when you're done, the architectural style has the appeal. You've got to walk up and think you're looking at Ryan. Because if you walk up and think you're looking at me, there's going to be a price penalty. Mm, no. <laughs> Finally, I like your speaks. price penalty. Check your tax records. All the time, people send you properties. It's a three-bedroom, two-bath. You go on the tax records, it's a two-bedroom, one-bath. That's okay. Just know you're going to take a price hit out the back end. So always check it. We all know that in this room. Buy 75% of ARV in a strong market. ARV is what? Say it out loud. After rehab value. You want to buy 75% of after rehab value. We buy now at 80 and 81. Why? Because we have been in a rising market. There's a little bit of a gamble in here. We see enough macroeconomic indicators that it has been extremely likely in the last 24 months that month on month there's going to be incremental price gain. There we've, there, therefore, because we need inventory, we can price in incremental price gain into our purchase. Now, I did this in the 90s. In the 90s, we priced in declining prices. So think about it. If your market's declining at 1% a month, do you stop buying flips? No. Of course, the YouTubers will go, the world's coming to an end. I've done this 31 years. I've never seen re uh, prices change overnight. Even in 2007 and 2008, it took two years for that decline to happen. Right, so I want you to watch this. If the market's going down 1% a month, you think the house is worth 450. You're gonna pay 300 for it, 320 for it. Decline it 1% a month, three grand a month, because you got one month to acquire, one month to close, one month to fix, one month to market, one month to close, five months you're gonna make payments, five times 1% is 5%, take your offer price, cut off 5%. You've now priced in the market, you price in the decline. What we've been doing is the flip side of that, and we've been pricing in the incline, and it's worked multiple, multiple times. Now we're pricing at par, just so that you know, we personally are pricing at par right now. 
but it's coming that we're going to price in the decline. We're not quite there yet. You're ahead of the pedal. And if you become one of those panic people, one of those extreme right, extreme left, guys, politics doesn't make you money. Money makes you money. Wisdom makes you money. Buying and selling stuff at a profit makes you money. There's not one politician on either side of the fence or in the middle who is ever going to pay one of your bills. You pay your bills. And you pay your bills by having vision. Don't see what they bombard you with every day on CNN, on Fox. See what's in your heart. See that vision and reach for that vision. And then what you see today will gradually change. Your car will get better. Your house will get better. Your relationships will get better. Your children will be stronger. You'll see strong people rising up around you because they start to see not what they see, but what you see. And then eventually they train their eyes well enough that they can see beyond as well. What do you see today? You have to see to be. And every house we walk up, we see something. Something that is not there, but will be there because we have the skills to put it there. You want to make half a million dollars two years in a row? You've got to see. And if you fill your brain with stuff that wants to put you in some mind trap, you may as well leave this room right now. You have to see and then have confidence in your model that you will execute so you can create an extraordinary life. I've had an extraordinary life in America with $1,000 showing up in Los Angeles. Sorry, I got passionate for me. You need this one? All right. <laughs> Woo! Okay. I swear, I've been listening to him speak now mm. for 20 years. Do you see how fast batteries <laughs> will go out of his mic? <laughs> and I get tears every time. Because there's always something different that comes out, but it's always about the people and you doing better for yourselves. So I've seen him speak to two people, and I've seen him speak to 10,000 people, and it's really special. You have to you understand, we, we, have en wonderful. we have enough money. We're blessed. We're grateful. We have nothing to sell you today. But this country's changed my life. And what we do can change your life. I've sold real estate for 31 years. Still selling real estate. Ask the young people who work with me. But this stuff will change your life. How much money is needed to buy a flip? This guy's going to come up in a minute and break this down. I'm going to hit this really fast. It's a, different, it's a combination between cash and leverage. Okay? Write those two words down. Cash and leverage. You do need some cash. You don't have any cash. Great. I'm glad you're here. If you don't have cash, you find flips. All you got to do is take this QR code that comes up in a minute. It drops you to our website as a realtor or as a private person. You could submit a property and you can represent us. So you got a client right here. Or we will pay you to find us those properties. That's why that QR code is up there. So if you don't have money, that's what we're going to go for. Right there, look. Get cash off of here. Copy that QR code. That takes you directly to the page on our website where you can submit properties to us. Do some due diligence first, because if you send me goofy properties, then the staff who works for me won't open their emails after the fifth goofy property, because they'll recognize your email and they'll flag it. I'll just say, time waster. <laughs> right? So you got to spend some time working on it. So get cash off of here. So let me come back to money. Can I go back to that other slide? I'm not quite sure where we went there, but go back to the other slide if you can. The money slide. Perfect. This is the money that you need. Here we go. You just found a property. Rene just found himself a property. He's all excited about it. He needs EMD, he earnest money deposits. It's going to be between 1% and 3%. $400,000 acquisition. You're going to need $12,000. You're going to need to send the check within 24 hours because they don't believe you until the money's in escrow. Second thing, you need the down payment. Most of the time, and, and Ryan will correct me if it's different within his company, but most of the time, a hard money lender is going to want to see skin in the game. They're going to want to see about 10%. 350 acquisition, 35 grand, right? You put in your earnest money deposit. Uh, you're going to need some money for closing costs because money isn't free. Oh, can you believe the rates, hard money lenders? You just did it. You just did it. You told me what you saw, not what you saw. You just did it. Can you believe? Seven, eight, nine, I'll pay 15%. Actually, I won't. Just stupid block your ears. I'll pay. <laughs> I'll pay, if, I, <laughs> if I'm going to make 60 grand out back and it's 15% in interest and it costs me five grand in interest, do you think it's a good business decision? 
But all that we see is what's right in front of us. See what you see. Make your seeing out here. Become seers, right? Not responders. So you need earnest money. You need your down payment. You need your closing costs. Then, oh my gosh, this is the scariest feeling in the earth. You show up at the house and you go, what did we do? <laughs> I mean, really, there's trash everywhere, smells of dog feces, windows are broken, bathrooms are leaking. You can tell where the North Star is because you can see it through the roof. <laughs> Neighbors are partying next door. This smell is in the air, and it's not cigarettes. And you're sitting there, every house we buy, you have that moment, it's that aha moment, and you just think, oh my goodness. My accountant, Scott Smith, is going to kill me. He's going to fire me. You have that moment. You have that moment. We're going to start in a short while. You have that moment. But when that moment comes, you now need to start construction immediately. You're going to hear a lot from Annette when we get on to construction. Construction, in case you didn't notice it, most contractors do not have an organization called the Andrew and Annette Warburton Make the Money Charity. They want to make money. They need to start trashing out. You've got to write the check for that trash out. You've got to write the check to haul it. You've got to write the check for the laborers. They've got to start construction. You want them to start strong. They've got to pay right away. They don't have the money. The contractors are living month to month, most of them. You need that money. So you need money for the EMD, down payment, closing costs, your construction float, demo, trash out, clean up, utilities, materials, and payments on the loan. Because every month, if it's a $330,000 loan and it's a whatever percent, you're going to pay... 2,500 bucks a month, $2,200 a month. You've got to pay that for six months while you're doing that. That's 12 grand you need, right? And they don't take IOUs. Now comes the leverage part. The leverage part is the construction holdback and two-week draws. So what happens with most hard money lenders, they will lend you money to purchase a property once you've got skin in the game, and then they will lend you money to fix up the property based on the exit or a uh, after rehab value of the property. You can draw down on that construction draw. Most projects, you can only do that every two weeks. So during that two week time, you need a float. I could go into much more detail, but I don't have the time. What's the bottom line? You're selling a property at 400, you buy it at 280, 290, 300, right? This is where we live every day of our lives. Every breakfast, every dinner, every lunch, we're talking about money on flips. True, fact. Oh, along with 30 to 35 properties we sell every month over at Keller Williams with a phenomenal team. Bottom line, 280, 400. You don't need $60,000 cash. 50,000 of that uh, money is going to be leveraged, and 15000 in your selling costs is going to be leveraged. Bottom line, you want to do a 300 to 400 flip, you're going to need about $65,000. I want to give you a piece of advice. Do not let that stop you. Get together, mom, dad, friends, four other realtors. They're all sick and tired of not putting your money in the bank, just the same as you are. Put it together. Put the 60 grand together. Get it together. Follow these principles. Start your model. Did I communicate with anybody in the room? Yeah, we don't have time to go into all of this, but this is an idea of what your closing costs looks like, and I want to show you something right here. Here's a piece of property we bought for $425,000. If you look down here, we had to come to escrow $53,000, but we'd already put in $12,750. There's a construction door on this property of $110,000. So you take $425 plus $110, that's $535, and that money is in our pocket through draws. That's 535, but why is it down here it says 547? You know why? Because it was $12,800 in closing costs. That's the closing costs that you need. So this gives you a really good idea of where the money goes. A lot of this goes to the lender right here. Recording fees over here, um, et cetera, et cetera. I don't want to break this down too much, but there's your buy price. There's how much money you've got into it, right? And you take your 425 plus your 110, 535, you've got... $12,877 in closing costs. That's the way it works. Make sure that you have a profitability analyzer. We're going to give you all the software today. We're going to give you every website. We're going to give you every tool that you need how to do this. You go, Andrew, you're crazy. I know. So look at this. So when you're calculating profitability, you need to know, first of all, what the property cost. Right there, $425,000. You need to know how much it's going to cost to repair that property. Right there, $135,000. we are doing this project right now, by the way. It was on the video. You saw it a minute ago. 
Your buying costs, we just saw that, $12,877, $13,000. Holding costs, costs us three grand a month. It's going to take us six months to turn this property, $18,000. Our selling costs, commissions, and et cetera, et cetera, $27,960. Bottom line, we're going to sell this property for $699. There's $80,040 profit in that property. We're fixing it right now. It was on the MLS. And fortunately, I have agents on my team over at Keller Williams that work extremely hard. They're literally in my office morning, noon, and night. Try this one. 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 Well, one of our agents found that one. It was, Pat it was Patrick. Patrick, right? Is he here? He's in the back, Patrick. Yeah. Where is he? Patrick found that property for me. When Patrick finds a property, he is at that property within half an hour of speaking to me on the phone. And it doesn't matter if it's in Big Bear. He calls me from Big Bear at 9 o'clock at night. He calls me from the desert at 6.30 in the morning. The property we have Avenida Ramirez right now working. He called me at 6.30 in the morning from Avenida Ramirez saying, why doesn't the lockbox work? Well, and there was no electricity at the property and it was dark, so we were trying to do a FaceTime at 6.30. So make sure you can calculate profitability. I'm going to give you some online resources. Photograph this screen. You need it. You ready to go? Simple stuff. You can start your model right here. Photograph it. First of all, for your Flipper website, I want you to go to carrot.com and subscribe. Do I get $2 a month? Do I look to you like I need $2 a month? Yes. Ryan? Just... <laughs> I love it that somebody did that. That's great. Look. Go to carrot.com. They will build out your website for you. You pay a subscription. I don't even remember what it is. 39 bucks a month, 29 bucks a month or whatever it is. You've now got a website where people can go and submit properties. You can customize it. You can do landing pages and advertise those landing pages. If you don't know how to do anything that I'm saying, you go to fiverr.com. You can pay somebody five bucks, 10 bucks, 15 bucks. I have a relationship with a designer who's a graduate in design from a university in Pakistan who's done our graphics now for three years. Absolutely phenomenal guy. Is he grateful for the money that we send? Absolutely. I usually pay him double what he asks me. He sends me the bill and I double it. So Fiverr.com, ad campaigns, logo design, tech help, pay-per-click ads, Facebook ads, all right here. You can get it all handled right here. Beware the agencies that say, because Carrot markets them. You go to our agency, we'll get you a flip lead once a month. It costs you two to $3,000 a month, and if you're lucky, you'll get one lead. And it'll probably be a mobile home for $90,000 in banning. It's not that easy. But you can develop pay-per-click campaigns, and there's all kinds of tutorials on this website right here that tell you hi. Now, in the meanwhile, you find a property, you think it's a killer deal, and you can't finance it. Do you want to make money on it? Yes. All you do is you go to that QR code, you go to andybuyshouses.biz, you submit that property, and one of our staff will pick that up and look at it, evaluate it. And I'll pay the staff member for helping you bring it to us and close the deal. Here's your key auction websites. These websites are going to be huge. I have brought, bought properties. I cannot even tell you how many properties off these websites right here. Hubzoo.com is a great one. Now, right now, there's less properties on those sites, but mark my words, it's coming. A deluge like 2007, 8? No. But more coming? Yes. Hubsu.com. This is a, a small but very profitable site, flansweener.com. Realtybid.com. Zome.com. Auction.com. This is mainly, be really careful, this is mainly courthouse steps properties. We don't buy courthouse steps because you've got a different type of deed. There's title complications. There's risk. I don't expose us to that risk. However, every now and again, oh, by the way, most of auction.com, the properties are occupied. And in California, it's on you to do that. We won't do that. We did just close one in Moreno Valley that took us six months to get the people out. That is not our business model. Homepath.com. This is Fannie Mae and Freddie Mac. Homesteps.com, Freddie Mac. And HUD.gov forward slash topics, blah, blah, blah. You can find all government repos right there. When you go into Google and you say, show me government repos, if it doesn't say .gov on the website, it's some guy using it as a landing page to try and capture your business. Do you all get me? All right. Did you all get a picture of this? Because I'm going to move on from it. Done? Okay. All right. So we're almost at... Uh, uh, my friend here at Ryan. Professional resources. Take a photograph of that. It's a mouthful. You ready? I already said you need a realtor network. We hope today you will be part of our realtor network. We hope, does any of you want an investor client? Can I see a show of hands from realtors in the room? You got one right here. You got one. 
All you have to do is go to that website. It's right here on your desk. Take this QR code. That takes you to the page you can submit properties to us. The first day that the board ran an ad for this, a lady from San Diego I'd never met said, oh, I see that you guys do flipping. Thank you so much. We have a property in Hemet. And she sent us a property in Hemet. Is this lady right here. Thank you so much. Now, as it happens, the property wasn't for us. And we'd happened to have looked at it before. But she was gracious enough to send us that property. And guess what? She'll send more. And guess what? She'll make money. Why? Because we buy them, she sells them. Cool with that. Oh, sorry. Sorry, brother, I'm taking your thunder here. It's because I can't stop looking at his handsome slides. <laughs> All right, Realty Network. You need a hard money lender. He's coming up next. Got to have him. Preferred lender broker. Why do you need a preferred lender? Because when you go into escrow, you want to be sure that that lender knows what they're doing, and you're going to want to cross-qualify them. Absolutely guarantee you that. I think this just went out. Did it? Next, you need a contractor network. I literally drive around and stop at flip jobs and go in and meet the contractors. Because most of them are unhappy and they're not getting paid by the flippers. We always pay our contractors well. We give them bonuses. We take care of them. So always be building your contractor network. By the way, are you hearing something? A trend here is be good to people. The guy who does my artwork, double his bills. I don't double the contractor's bills because we'd lose money. Always bonuses. You, can count, you cannot count the number of times that I've walked off an inspection. I have a few hun in my pocket, and I'll pull out a hun and give one to each of the workers on the site. And when I text them, I do emojis on everything, and they love that. Just something little small, you know, to make them feel special. I'm constantly. This is a brilliant woman right here. You're going to see in a minute. You need a banker for credit lines, credit cards. You need a title insurance specialist. This is not the guy who provides donuts and pads. This is not the guy you think is nice. It's not the guy you go to church with. It's not the guy you sit in a Bible study with. Bible studies have got nothing to do with flipping homes. This is the guy who knows how to remove title issues. This is the guy when the deed gets rejected by the county, his legal team is going to jump on your side and get that deed recorded. This is the guy when there's an easement that could be an alienation issue that he can resolve that easement. This is the guy that when there's a mechanics lien on it, he can record it anyway and create a fund to protect all parties from that mechanics lien. This is the guy who understands title insurance, not donuts. Everybody get that? You can tell I've been in real estate a long time, right? 31 years is a long time. Escrow specialist. Again, this isn't necessarily the pretty girl or the pretty guy. This is somebody who knows how to do a manufactured home escrow. It knows how, somebody who knows how to do an assignment. Most escrow companies that come in, they go, well, that's not legal. Or well, they don't know what assignment is legal. Number one issue with an assignment, the only legal assignment is if the party it's being assigned to is the same party but in a different entity that the contract was written with originally. So your escrow company needs to know about assignments. Home warranty rep, okay, that's a no-brainer. Basic legal right here. Legal Shield, sign up for it, 29 bucks, 19 bucks a month. It used to be one of those awful multi-level things years ago. Now it's absolutely brilliant. The money I have saved with Legal Shield is phenomenal. You literally pay like 19 bucks a month. You have an issue that comes up. You send a description of it. The attorney will turn around and write a letter for free within 72 hours to the person who says, I'm going to sue you. Nine times out of 10, they just got a bad temper. So these are wonderful people right here. Real estate attorneys, we talked about that already. Make sure you've got an insurance broker because you're going to need different type of insurance for every property. And make sure you've got an investment advisor. Why do you need an investment advisor? Because you're going to make half a million dollars a year. And we have a really great one in the room. <laughs> so Scott, stand for a second, would you? Just welcome Scott. He did not need to come today, but he did. Thank you, Scott. Thank you, sir. So Scott Smith does all of our financials, sets up our LLCs, he sets up our S-Corps, he's absolutely brilliant. I don't know if you still work for the court system in Riverside, you did for a long time? Occasionally. Very, very talented man, make sure you set yourself up right, set your financials up right, set your structure up right, and I would encourage you, if you're serious about doing this, make sure, you do by the way, make sure you talk to this gentleman before you leave today. All right, investment advisor, CPA, LLCs, corporate tax, tax strategy, right here. Literally, Scott, this year, I'm trying to think what the number was. It was roughly $160,000 you saved us in a tax bill, right around there. Yeah. About $160,000 saved off our tax bill from the IRS this year. So you have to have the right team. All right. With that, I'm going to pass it over to you, Rick. Anybody enjoying this so far? Anybody learned something? Wonderful. Over to you, Rick. All right, folks, very good information. How many of you are getting good resources? Say yes. 
Really cool. So I want to draw your attention now. You're getting information. You're getting websites. Write that down. A couple more things. You are not going to get a PowerPoint slide. So when you see it, take a photo of it and make sure that you document the information as you want to go through it. Remember the phone number. Write it down again if you didn't. 951-951-616. 4401 951-616-4401. We'll be more than happy to take your questions. I want to remind you of the website, andybuyshouses.bizbiz. Make sure it's not C-O-M-B-I-Z-Biz. And also make sure at the end of each one of the tables, when we take a break later on, that you will take the QR codes. You will go ahead and scan them in, and we want you to like and follow those QR codes. Very important as an agent if you have a property that you would like to tell these folks about. I am really excited because now I get to introduce you to his wallet. <laughs> Paradigm... Funding is a very, very important source here in the Inland Empire area, as we've already explained. So what we've done is we've asked them to step here and come on in and let us know some of the big key factors that they need to know in order to support you and your buy, fix, and flip. Please welcome the CEO of Paradigm Funding, Ryan Garland. Thank you guys all for having me. Number one, the energy is off the charts, and I absolutely love doing this stuff. I've traveled all over the world doing this type of stuff, so I'll just kind of give you guys, well, this popped off, huh? Here we go. Hey, the energy. So go to the second slide. There we go. Okay. So as you guys, uh, how many, you know, let me take a quick toll. How many of you guys have heard of Paradigm? How many of you guys know, and this is kind of a two-fold question, how many of you guys know about us doing private money? How many of you guys know we do commercial and syndication? Okay, so, all right. So, good. I just want to kind of get a bead because we're big data junkies and big marketing nerds. So I just want to see kind of who's heard of us and who hasn't. So a lot of my stuff actually isn't here in Temecula, except for Europa Village like you guys all heard. But my background actually is in traditional mortgage prior to 2008, the 2008 crash happened. I was uh, fortunate enough uh, to be introduced to a gentleman that had a $30 million budget per month. He was a former hedge fund manager uh, from China. I met him in Vegas partying, and as you guys all know, Vegas um, was the foreclosure capital of the country. And so when he heard that I had a presence here in the Inland Empire, he came to us and said, hey, you know, uh, Vegas is the foreclosure capital. Second in line is the Inland Empire. We would love for to have you guys start parking our capital and start buying up, you know, REO assets and short sales and so forth. That was kind of, uh, you know, it's bread and butter at the time. So what I've done fast forward was kind of dive into the private equity markets. As I continued to syndicate and raise money, you know, transactions start having zeros behind them. So I started getting into commercial. It's kind of just that simple. One of the things I really loved about Andrew's pitch today was just kind of having to be a pit bull, right? That's kind of the game that I got. So one of the things that one of the things that I've done is just kind of kept going. So I want to share with you guys a little bit today that I had to start somewhere as well, and really through private money has opened up my eyes to a lot of other options and other things that I can do personally moving forward in my business. So besides you know, talking on private money, I also talk on larger stages like Dubai. That's why you guys see I have a, a global presence. I've been in Dubai. I've been in London. I've spoken to all the richest, the, the poorest. I've talked to everybody and kind of given people hope and also a red carpet on how to kind of get to creating wealth through real estate. And I think all of you guys are all going to agree the majority of your guys' retirement plans is through real estate investing, right? We all know there's more millionaires made in real estate investing. However, my platform is really designed catering to my real estate agents and LO friends because unless you're married and have somebody with a 401k or an IRA or a stable job, your only retirement plan is going to be real estate, right? 
and there's usually a chain of command. You start from as a real estate agent, and then you go into fix and flips, you go into maybe being a broker, and you start you know, building. There's just that standard you know, chain of growth, right? So we've all been there. So what I've done is I've actually opened up a platform to allow investors to get more involved in what it is we're doing, and then I'm taking that capital and parking it out on the streets to people like you. So I'll come in here and say, hey, okay, guys, I can provide private financing for you guys to fix and flip properties, but I have a whole group of investors behind the scenes that are giving us the capital to do it. Does that make sense? And one of those, a lot of those private investors are all baby boomers. These are all guys that had 401ks, IRAs. They want to spend more time with their families. So they want to spend more time with their grandkids. They're scared of the market. They've lost everything in a way. They've already been through bankruptcies. They've already been through divorces. I, for example, one of my favorite clients, her daughter um, had an open heart surgery and died on the operating table. It was her second one, and she invested all of her life insurance policy. So my business is about, is about relationships, kind of piggybacking off what Andrew said. These people, I'm listening to their desires and their wants. So I've naturally become a listener, two ears and one mouth. I'm learning what they want, and they want steady cash flow and income. We all want that, right? That's why you guys are here. You guys want to be able to get to a point where you have enough cash flow that you can retire, and you guys are able to go to the, the river and go do whatever it is you want to do, travel, right? That's the point. But those people have already done it. So those people have already become it were, were you guys at one time. So I also, I like to tell everybody, I surround myself around people a lot smarter than me. You'll see here in a little bit, that's really, really the truth. So what I've done today is kind of create this platform. And in 20, what, uh, July of 2020, I launched a $100 million REIT. As most of you guys know, the largest mortgage-backed security market is REIT markets, real estate investment trusts, all for tax strategy. Okay? I'm giving you guys a little background so you guys can kind of know how to move forward. Okay. So by doing that, we saw what happened in the pandemic and all that money being pumped into the economy, right, with the stimulus package. So what happened? Everyone started going, distressed assets. Did all of us think that 2008 was happening, coming down that road again? We all did, right? So what did we do? We decided to figure out a way to create a strategy to allow investors to park their money, get cash flow, but also park the money on streets for people who want to fix and flip properties and be a little more bullish and start building their, net, their, their wealth the real estate acquisition. But one of the things that you want to focus on is not only just the flip of the property, you want to have a second backup plan. What if, that, what if the market does tank? Let's say for God, we have to be, we want to be hopeful, but you don't want to be naive. Right? I think we're all scared of everything that's going on in the marketplace right now. And when you're underwriting a file or underwriting a transaction, which we'll have a set of eyes on it for you, we'll look at it and say, okay, if God forbid something happened, can you rent this project out and keep it as for a cash flowing asset? So you don't have a foreclosure and you don't lose your equity that you put down. That's the idea, right? So I'll give you guys a little bit more on what we're doing, but that's bottom line is we've come into the marketplace looking at different strategies. We were dead on with our projections on what happened in 2020. We knew who was going to take the election. We looked at the data, just to be honest with you, I surround myself around smarter people. And we saw who was going to take the election before we did. We created the strategy a year before that election happened. So we had a very clear understanding where the capital market was going. And right now, I truly believe you guys are in the right, you guys are here, and this is really the time to start acquiring properties. Because by the time you guys sharpen your blade, you guys will be able to be very effective. And I'll give you guys some additional data. Okay, my background. Can you hear me? Okay, my background. So really started in the traditional real estate space uh, and single family. Got into distressed assets, working with high net worth clientele, as you guys see. And in 2008, I was actually doing anywhere between 150 to, to 150 uh, REOs and, and uh, short sales a month. So I was actually had an entire team in Las Vegas. I had an entire team in Riverside. And I had a staff about as big as this with nothing but processors. We were buying up REOs and short sales like crazy. And what we were doing was giving back. Like he kept saying, give back. Imagine if you guys were going through a short sale of your property, losing everything. And let's be honest, a lot of people are losing their marriages too. So if I can come in there and say, hey, let me buy this property from 70 cents on the dollar, lease it back to you and give you the ability to lease back your own property. And then 36 months later, after a short sale, you can go with the FHA loan again and buy the property back. So you get a lease option to purchase your property back. So now you can keep your kids, your families in the same school district and the list kind of goes on. That took root and took off. I sold that company for over eight, eight figures and decided to get into lending private money. That's how I got here today. All through traditional mortgage, right? 
never, I didn't come over here on a ship like this guy or anything yeah. like that. <laughs> but you can do it if you surround yourself around the right people and you're bullish and you get out in the market and you do it. I don't want to push too many times here. Okay. So kind of there's a different philosophy that we have, as you guys know. We do also do private money, but, or we do private money, but we also do a lot of commercial inv impact investing. Basically, think of it this way. If we're going to go into a Section 8 home or we're going to go into an area that needs rehab and you're cleaning up a house, you're creating a positive impact, right? So our mindset is to go in there and clean up properties. You know, there's sometimes you have, you know, people living in those properties doing a lot of boot and heroin and doing all kinds of stuff that we see. If you go in there and clean up that property, you're doing a positive, it's a positive impact on that, on that, in essence, I always call the city economy. So that's what we focus on is positive impact investing. Those are a lot larger. ESG, sustainable asset planning. Uh, well, we have a wealthy mindset. A lot of things that we're doing now is I implement an, op an option um, to my investors, borrowers, the option to put uh, green building material in their property and also health and wellness aspect, meaning hospital grade air, circadian rhythm lighting, and water filtration systems, which is huge for marketing when you're trying to sell your property. Because everyone's worried about another COVID, right? So if you have air filtration in there and it only costs you 1200 bucks to put it in, maybe a good move for branding. So we offer that stuff. So we're really kind of on the front lines. That $250 million in projects is actually low. Right now I have $450 million in projects. One of them is a big chunk, $185 million is Europa Village. I also bought 43 acres in Nashville, Tennessee. I'm building 120 units of townhomes. I'm keeping them as apartments and keeping them as rentals. The reason we're doing that is because apartments, commercial apartments, are more expensive to build than single family. So fixing and flipping properties, construction trades are cheaper. So right now, flipping properties is a big, big move, okay? So even if you wanna build single family, it's a big move, all the same concept. <clears throat> well, we have, we're finishing 45 townhomes in Denver. We're building apartments in San Antonio. What else am I missing? I think it's it, right? Yeah, Denver, we're up in Denver. So anyways, so we, we kind of know how to go from zero to 100. I like to at least think so. So as far as you guys want to go, whether it goes to fix and flips, building your portfolio, looking at things from an investment side, trying to go out to the capital markets, trying to raise capital from an equity side, we can kind of come in there and help you. So like I said, this is a relationship business. If you guys are looking to establish a relationship with a good lender, you guys can go from fix and flips, you can go as far as you want to go. That's kind of the point for this background. What we do, so from a private money side, we basically are just lending money for people who are borrowing money for fix and flips, right? So what's that mean? Typically it means that a traditional mortgage lender will go in and look at a property and say, this thing is in too bad of a condition, we're not gonna lend on it, right? Kind of just that simple. Or it just needs you know, a significant amount of rehab or you wanna do an addition or you wanna do an ADU building or what have you, and you just need a fast closing to also be aggressive to be able to get that offer accepted Private money is kind of usually the way to go. So that's ultimately what we're doing. What's the basis of private money? Kind of piggybacking off what I just mentioned. What we're trying to do is go out to borrowers and say, hey, if you guys are looking to flip properties, here are the metrics, I'm gonna give you guys those metrics on that you have to follow to be able to, uh, let's say, submit that project to us and we'll say, okay, this is what we can do for you for pricing. This is what you need to come in with for a down payment. This is how much your payments are gonna be. This is what your closing costs are gonna be. And based off of our analysis, depending on your construction budget, is what we think it's going to take for you guys to turn that property. Now, you guys are going to be the professionals and bring it to me. I'm just going to be that other voice using my experience to kind of give you guys some guidance. <clears throat> Qualify for private money. Really kind of simple. 620 FICO, three months bank statements, proof of funds. Also, because I see people writing. LLC needs to be a business purpose loan. So you need to have an LLC, trust, Corporation, I'm not going to tell you a corporation, he's not going to like me, so you invest in a corporation. Trust, is not trust. trust, yeah. I'll tell you, it's all tax strategy. But with your, with your, with your por portfolio, you can deal with the trust. <clears throat> Wait, hold on, you need to talk to your... <laughs> <laughs> I can't give tax advice. He can. He can. Yeah, he can. Okay, let's see. What do you need in appraisal? We do, but here's your metrics. What makes us aggressive is the fact that we actually, in some cases, don't need an appraisal. We can do a BPO. 
the metric is this, wherever you're buying the property, as long as the density, you have 100,000 residents or more, I can do a BPO. If not, I have to do, use an appraisal. And we all know how long t it takes to, you know, <laughs> get appraisals, right? Yeah. So that, that's going to keep that in mind. Uh, what's it cost for the loan? I'm actually going to go, I'm going to jump into this here in a second. I'm going to go back to that. I'm going to show you right here. All right. So here's, if you guys want to take a picture of this, this is probably important. I'm going to give you guys some, some data. And on top of that, if you guys are interested, let me know in the back. Give me your card. I'm not just doing a Zoom, live Zoom on how to run this spreadsheet. So I'll give you guys a spreadsheet on how to actually calculate your flip going to every acquisition. Okay, so this is in Malibu. This is a, a finished construction. If you guys remember all the fires a few years ago, we had a group out there just buying up a bunch of these assets, tearing down the existing homes. And this is a little bit larger deal. I'm not sure why my, my marketing manager put it in there, but whatever. So after repair values, five, uh, 5 5.2 million. So here's the data that I need. Purchase price, after repair value, rehab amount, Term requested, is it 12 months, 18 months, 24 months? What's your all-time objective? And how long are you guys thinking the rehab's gonna be? And, and the address, that's all I need. If you guys just email me that, I can issue an LOI and just tell me what your credit score is. If you say my credit score is 680 and above, or I can do in some cases 620, but if you guys are 680 and above, that's a good metric to follow, okay? So here you go, you have, you have a, you have a you have a $3.2 million first trustee loan. What I did is I added the purchase price in the budget and I did 80% loan to cost. So with ground up construction or major construction, we go off total cost. Acquisition and what your construction budget is, we do 80% of that number when you add them together. That makes sense? On top of that, one of the most famous projects or products that we have is what we call our 80-100 product. 80% of purchase price, this is standard for flips, and 100% rehab financing. So if you guys are buying a property for 300 grand, we can do 20% down at 60,000 down. We're netting 240 at closing. And then let's say you have a $100,000 rehab, I'll give you 100,000 for rehab. So in essence, I'm giving you a $340,000 loan, more than what you bought the property for, right? So that's kind of a standard metric. Now, just to be candid, we can go up to 90%, but you have to have a track record. You need five flips in the last 36 months to get to 90%, 10% down. 100% rehab. That make sense? <clears throat> Let's go back. The other way. Go the other way. Keep going. Two more. Right there. So here, here's, our, here's our terms. All non-owner occupied. We don't do any owner occupied. I can go as low as 7% and that's still to today's rates. Even though they're changing, remember this is private capital. People invested money, they already know what they're gonna get in their coupon. So I can still go as low as 7%, loan to cost, 80 to 85% loan to cost, 100% of rehab, and I can do, and where your real metric is, is if you add the loan amount, whatever the total of that is compared to your ARV, 75%, I can't exceed 75% of ARV. Nationwide lending, a lot of people actually, even though you're local or buying stuff in you know, Arizona, Nevada, Texas, you know, so we can do stuff in, in almost any state. Um, so this is the ground up construction model as well. 250,000 to 20 million, still at the 7% interest rate, 80% loan to cost. Very simple, no, no prepayment penalty, very simple stuff. We already went over that. DSCR loan, I was talking to somebody today on this. This is really important. If you guys are looking to get a rental program, this is it. 30, per, 30 year interest only for a portfolio if you're looking to build, buy rentals. This is it, 7%, 20% down. And if you're trying to do cash out on an existing property, 70% loan to value. That's a really cool product. You just need a 680 FICO. Okay. Twenty percent down. That's just on a purchase. Question was, is cash down on a purchase for a DSCR loan? That's uh, twenty percent down. Um, some recently funded projects, 765,000 uh, Oceanside, 85% loan to value, purchase price 905, we closed in two days. That's another thing that gives you guys some, some, some leverage. We can close quickly. So if you guys need to get an offer accepted, get it done. A lot of times, I say this humbly, if you guys use our LOIs and submit to agents, especially in Orange County, they may have heard of us and they're probably gonna accept your offer because they know we're gonna close. So just keep that in mind. Sometimes I'll require an appraisal, but I'll order the appraisal and get it done after I close for you guys, okay? 
That's different, that's completely different than most private lenders. Now, this is kind of, remember I was telling you guys, I surround myself around people smarter than me, so I'm wrapping this up. This is Mark, this is our CFO. This guy's managing billions and billions of dollars, and I've been fortunate enough to steal him. So you guys can tell where he came from. Number one largest real estate investment firm in the country, actually the world. Um, actually worked for the retirement pension fund for New York City State, or New York State, or New York City, sorry. Um, controller for real estate portfolio owned by New York City Common Retirement Fund. So these are who these guys are that are raising capital and helping us park it out on the streets. So the ultimate, the point to this is, is that we can help you guys grow from fix and flips to commercial to building your portfolios to whatever it is you guys are looking to do. I like to think I can help anybody get anywhere. And I've been doing this for a long time. So I feel with our existing borrowers, we retain 85 to 90% of our existing borrowers. We just keep getting more and more borrowers. And it's because we close quickly. It's because we have compressed rates. It's because we aren't selling as many notes as people think we are. So we do have a lot of flexibility to get the deal done. My legal team, that's a half a million a year, just so you know. <laughs> Steve Annapol, number one securities attorney in the world, did the, the EB-5 raise, largest EB-5 raise for Hudson Yard, 700 million, all Chinese capital. And then these are just my other securities attorneys. My processor, Kristen's in the back. If anybody has questions, Kristen, please raise your hand, say hi. Okay, if you guys have any questions, she will be your kind of person you'll be talking to besides me. So if we can approve a deal, it goes right to Kristen. Kristen takes it to the grave. And that is pretty much it for me. Excellent. Excellent. All right, very good. Can you guys see that we are, uh, look at the last message on there. Can you guys see that we are absolutely giving you solid information? Uh, and can you see the power of the people that we're bringing in front of you? This is absolutely good when it comes to the buy, fix, flip in this market right now. I am really proud of the people sitting behind me. Uh, I've had the opportunity now to uh, be their coach and mentor and, uh, and help them to get to where they are. And it is really important that what Ryan said, you cannot be successful alone. You need to surround yourself with people like we're bringing in front of you. Uh, one more thing just real quick if I can. Sir, are you taking on new clients? What is your name again? Scott Smith and his phone number, because you, uh, you need a good accountant for this, please. 951-304-2272. All right, guys, please welcome Andrew and Annette Warburton. All right, who wants to hear more from Annette? Anybody there want to hear more from Annette? You're going to hear a lot more from Annette right now. I just want to give a little plug here. Don't want to sound like your grandpa, but I've done real estate a long time, 31 years. I was a pastor, a TV show, radio show, all that. Just needed to get away from it. I was burned out. Had enough money for 60 days. So I went out and did open houses every weekend. And a friend of mine who just passed, he was a sheriff of San Diego, and he was an assistant manager at Cobalt Banker. Manager at Cobalt Banker. He says, Andy, you got to come over here. And I said, I'm a realty executive, so I'm, I'm keeping all the commission. I was dumb. And not that you're dumb to be in real, realty executives, <laughs> but I was just dumb because I thought it was about what I kept, not what I made. It was, I always think I was what I could see, not what I could see. Anyway, four years later, I was in Time Magazine. And the mentorship of this guy just changed my career. I wasn't smart enough to work it out. He was. And... Uh, I will tell you something that, that was a long time ago, it was 1994. And uh, he recently passed, and we were running Warburton Properties, and we were involved with a lot of you know, legal stuff and agents, Brian, you know, buddy, we've been friends forever. And uh, we decided to make the switch to go back to Keller Williams because it took all of the legal off our shoulders and so on and so forth, and I heard that this guy right over here, this guy. <laughs> who, by the way, actually helped Gary Keller build Keller Williams. And yeah, I mean, it's really a crazy story. And uh, helped him write the Millionaire Agent book, which is one of the best-selling real estate books in the world. And we're not about to sell anything, I'm just being honest with you. 
And we were pretty much done with selling real estate, Brian, you know, on a day-to-day -day basis. And we have a little 12-year-old boy, and he's going to come in a minute. And everything that we're doing is about Jonathan and Annette. Scott knows me pretty well, and he knows every time I sit down in front of him, what is it I say? It's about Annette and Jonathan. And we have enough. We're thankful. We're grateful. I'm not really a greedy guy. I love the feeling of success. I love to grow, just like Ryan. Um, but my point is this. So we came over to Keller Williams, and the year before, I think we did 40 or so transactions. And within a year, we'd sold 185 properties. <laughs> Yeah, so it's crazy, right? And we're on target this year, somewhere between 270 and 300 closings with our team. So kudos to everybody on the team. We've set up these amazing funnels. Yeah, it's really exciting. And a lot of that's due to Rick's mentorship, which we're sincerely grateful. I mean, that's a huge change in business shift. So we're very grateful to Rick. And what you see Rick doing for us as a servant here, <laughs> He does in front of 20, 25,000 people every single year at Gary Keller's request at the Keller Williams conventions, which is super good. You might be with Cobalt Banker or wherever. That's great. It's fabulous. I'm just letting you know what's changed in our life. Uh, and I'm very, very grateful for that. And now uh, his mentorship with, with uh, Andy Bites Houses and partnerships like with Ryan here. I just stood like a little kid with Ryan beforehand and like texted him four times this weekend from the beach house going to, there's just a lot of things that we're going to build out together. Um, and the funding piece has been a, is an integral part of that. So I just wanted to thank people who deserve to be thanked. All right, would you like to go to the last two phases of how you're going to make money in this? Yes? Is anybody in this room genuinely? I'm a pretty genuine guy. Very difficult to get along with because I'm always running 100 miles an hour. But I'm a pretty genuine guy. I will genuinely tell you what I think. How many people, right, Brian? <laughs> How many people in this room can genuinely say, I can smell more opportunity than I anticipated when I came in? You've got a, like an awakening inside you that you know you're not being pitched. Do you see there's no books for sale? There's no course for sale? There's no coaching? That's next week, by the way. No. Is that <laughs> but you get my point, right? And there's no pitch at the end. Thank you for sitting through this. Give me $3,000. You can come next weekend. That's next time. No. The point... The point that I'm making is that something's awakening inside you. And I just had my 65th birthday, and I want to say to you guys, it's all about what you see. And if what you see, if you're glued to that cell phone, you're glued to that TV, you're glued to the news to the left, you're glued to the news to the right, you basically bought failure. You've bought by being controlled by somebody else. Stop it. You've only got one chance to live this life. God willing, I've got 20 or 25 more years to live with my beautiful wife and son. Every minute of that time is valuable. Every second is valuable. And I will not consider for one second giving ownership of that time to somebody else. So here is an opportunity to really change your life. You do these things, you will change your finances. You will make a lot of Follow the formula. So here we go. That was a personal moment. I hope that was okay with you. Sincerity is important, right? I can scream and yell at you all day long, but now we're going to get into construction. Honey, come stand up here with me. Okay. Much so I love to see you sit there in those black pants. Um, <clears throat> okay, so we're going to... This is our relationship. If it offends you, I'm sorry. It's not going to Well, if change. they've watched any of our videos on social media, they know. <laughs> so John John is taking a final at uh, school right now. And Justin just went to bring him over here, and you're going to hear from him the last 10 or 15 minutes, how a 12-year-old is learning how to build a flip business. A 12-year-old. It would it'll stagger you, uh, and the humility that he has. It's just a fabulous child. But I want to talk about construction, because this is a, an area, Annette controls a lot of the finances in our corporation. Uh, I'm definitely the acquisition guy. Uh, but when it comes down to construction, and that literally runs it every day, probably, I don't know, 60, 70 hours a week at least that she's involved with the contractor. So, honey, just jump in at any point. When we start construction, so I said acquisition, construction, disposition, okay? This can make or break your project, the decisions that you make and how you handle it. So, first of all, determine the structural and cosmetic changes with the contractor. Is there anything you want to add on to that, honey? 
Well, I know once we acquire a property, we actually do a run through with our contractors. Um, we try and be there physically with them because there's a lot of communication barriers sometimes with contractors, right? right? right. So we are able to point and make notes for them. But we will go to each property with the contractor and do a full walkthrough inside and out of the property. And at that time, we brainstorm with each other. Oh, I like this. That's oh, right. I like this. Oh, let's take this down. Oh, let's take this down. And the whole time, Andrew's running dollars in his head. And I'm <laughs> saying, let's do this. Let's do that. Uh, but so we, in the very beginning, we do a, a full walkthrough with the contractors so they know what kind of bid we're looking for. And you see two important words here, structural and cosmetic. So you see a lot of people watch HGTV and, you know, I'm going to be a flipper. They never become flippers. And, oh, honey, I just want to tear all of that down. I want to take down all those walls and I'm going to knock that out. I'm going to blow out the roof and I want to hold the top that I can see Mars when we're sitting at supper. And, and now you get down to reality. That's a bearing wall. You got to put in structural change. You build in steel. Your trusses aren't going to support the roof. Oh, I just think concrete would look lovely on that roof. Yeah, but it'll also cave it in. Uh, so you have to know, is it structural or cosmetic? And again, the net skills are tremendously valuable on that. Determine that up front. Set the budget up front with a margin for add-ons. We have yet to flip a house that came in on budget. <laughs> Not one, ever. So we just price in the margin of error, which is quite large. So, so, and really, I'm, you know, Annette will often come to me and say, this is cheaper, right? You'll come to oh, me and say, oh, yeah. she'll come to me all the time and say, this is cheaper and that's cheaper, right? Mm -hmm. Like this fixture's cheaper. And my answer is this. Okay, I want to sell this house as a premium product. How much cheaper is it? It's $17 a fixture. How many fixtures are there in the house? 13. Okay. So you want to save us about 280 bucks or I'm going to have something that looks kick-ass. <laughs> Spend the money. So... You but know, it it's adds that, up. It's that debate backwards and forwards on each time. Does this really look like a flipper tried to cheap his way out of it? Or does it look like, I imagine, please, this is not a HUD issue. I imagine families moving in. I look at, imagine single men and single women. I need to go through the list of everybody just to be politically correct here. But I imagine human beings. There you go, that one's safe. I imagine human beings moving into the homes. I don't care what their preferences, what their politics is. I don't care if they came from Mars or wherever they came from. All I care is that when they move in that house, they go, wow, these flippers did a good job. Right? That's, that's the way we approach it. No matter if it's a manufactured home or a home that we're doing in the desert that's just under a million. I walk through each room and it's weird. It's almost like the houses talk to me. Yeah. So I have to go to the properties. And I imagine families in that living room building mm -hmm. memories. You know, if you have that kind of attachment or love for bringing joy to people like that, it's easy. The hard part is finding those elements that don't cost you an arm and a leg to create that kind of environment. So we're going to go into that in just a minute. Do a scope of work and timeline agreed by all parties. Write that down. Underscore it. 17 times. Do a scope of work and timeline agreed by all parties. When you've done your scope of work and you've set your timeline, make sure the contractor agrees to it, signs off on it. When you've done that, post it in the garage. Oh, we have contractors. The week that they finish something, they're required to get to us pictures and what they've done okay, that week so I can support. Oh, we are? <laughs> oh, okay. I'm jumping ahead. Laminated. But they look at this list yeah. and they have to write it down or else. It's amazing how hard <laughs> contractors work when there's surveillance cameras. Yes. I don't know why that is. I don't understand it. <laughs> But it's kind of that idea that God's watching us, so you better de be nice to somebody, you know? It's the same thing. Set up your surveillance cameras, utilities, and Wi-Fi. Establish and maintain a clean street view. I can't tell you how important that is. When I first started this, and I was actually helping other people do it, they would always do the outside last. In fact, I was driving to Sacramento once a week for all the properties that we bought up there. And I would show up, and I'd have 15 properties to look at. And Brian, every single one of them just looked like crap. Weeds growing and all that. And they're like, oh, we're going to do that at the end. That's a huge mistake. As soon as you get the property, demo it, trash it out, clean it up. So the neighbors think you're the best thing that ever happened. I always personally go and meet the neighbors. And I tell them, I know this house is really being an eyesore, and we're going to change your neighborhood for you again. We're going to bring the values up. And I give them my card, and they will call us if they see something at that house. So making friends with the neighbors, keeping a clean street view, you're going to find you get red tagged if you don't do a clean street view, and that's a pain. Now the city's all over you all the way through it. And also put up two signs, one which is a warning sign to people who might uh, venture onto your private property, and the other is for information about this property, please call. Those are very basic things. What's the most important thing on that page? All right, next. 
There's a five-week overview. This is very basic. We are, by the way, in the throes of planning like a weekend seminar where you learn every single detail of how to do this. And you'll have sit-down time with Ryan and his team. Very, very detailed. But this is enough that you can start. By the way, a detailed workshop like that over a weekend. How many of you in this room would be interested in that? Can I see a show of hands? Actually, a lot more than I thought. Okay. So we'll email you. So week one, I want you to read those first words out loud on three. One, two, three. All right, let's do it again. It's those first four words. One, two, three. Make it hard. So, so many flippers err in this area and they drift into a project. When you close a project and you sign up your contract to break it in hard, and this is where I do make some enemies. Break it in hard. You're going to know if it's a new contract at the end of that first week whether you're going to do another project with him or not. It is so important to break the back of that flip in the first week. All of your cleanup done, all of your demo done, your systems torn apart, your electrical torn apart, your plumbing torn apart, check your roof, check your eaves, uh, dry rot taken out, just break it in hard. Why? Because after two weeks, you're going to file for a construction draw, and you're not going to get a construction draw unless the bank sees substantial change to the property. Second week, Avoid the drift. So in the second week of the project, you're rebuilding the core. What do I mean by the core? You're rerouting plumbing. You're rerouting electrical. You're working where your lighting fixtures are going to go. You're taking out a wall. You're, you're where the kitchen island's going to go. You're, all that stuff. You, right here, you're rebuilding the core of the home. I will tell you after two weeks, I get nervous in a project. Because I go in, we've broken it in hard, we're rebuilding the core, and I work out how much money we've spent. You can't see anything yet, just mess. And it's, when I say mess, you get what I mean. It just doesn't look pretty, nothing looks pretty. There's one thing in the house that looks pretty, it's a net. <laughs> and of course, if Ryan comes and visits the project. <laughs> but you get my point. There's nothing in the property that's pretty. This is a tough stage of the property. Go to week three. This is where your highly visible upgrades take place. And also, when you hit week three, you're most likely to get construction draw here because the, the lender will send out a inspector and they will check and evaluate because the last thing they want to do is if you've got uh, 70 grand in a construction drawer and you ask for 35,000 of it, you've only done $20,000 worth of work. They're 15 grand in the hole. They're not going to do that. So managing this construction project, listen to me carefully, with quantifiable, measurable improvements is vital to your cash flow. And if you get it wrong, that 60 grand I told you could quickly grow to 80 grand. And we at one point with this, we were not so good at this. Now we've gotten a whole lot better at it. We had $720,000 out on 11 jobs. $720,000 out on 11 jobs. And you feel that. So the construction drawers are directly related to your highly visible upgrades. Week four is what we call rounding off. So your kitchens are in, your countertops are in, or they're coming in. You've prepped for tile, your shower pans are done, your tubs are replaced. You know, the major things are happening, but now you're going to get down to all those finishes inside. Now, are you going to have rain gutters or not? Put them up. Is the garage door in or not? Put them up. Is the windows in or not? Put them up. Is the countertops done or not? Are the cabinets in or not? Are the vanities in the bathrooms? Yes or not? What about all your fixtures and fittings and lights and are all your... All of that, you want to be sure that this gets rounded off in week four, because week five is meet Jesus time. Because week five is blue tape. That's where we go out and we look around that property with a roll of blue tape and Jonathan helps us and we tape everything that we would not want in that home if we were living in it. That's blue tape time. And we're going to break down that schedule in a minute. Is there anything you want to add on that, honey? All right. So this is what our construction schedules look like. Now, if you go into uh, Flipper Force, you'll be able to see all this in the software. Yeah, look at those cameras going. So this lines out every item in the project, landscape here, dumpster delivery, drywall patching, countertop measuring, countertops installed, you see, final cleaning. And each one of these parts of the project starts at the beginning of the colored bar. 
And at the end of the color bar is when it needs to be complete because it's directly related to the next and the next and the next and the next all the way down to here. So we enter all of these construction projects and these stages of construction into the software and the software turns around and gives us a chart like this so we can manage the jobs. You know what you're gonna do? You're gonna turn around, you're gonna post that in the garage as well. Right. It gives you a great guideline, but mm -hmm. I guarantee you 100% of the time it never stays on target. So you have to be very flexible, but forceful and firm as well. Can I tell you, this is not as exciting as an HGTV show. No. When Annette, Annette and I are standing out in the lobby having a fake fight, pretending we don't live, love each other and we're going to leave each other, and we completely disagree on everything, and she hates me and I hate her, and here we come in anyway, and everybody walks it. But you learn squat about flipping houses. I said to him, if ever we do this, I want to do it real. I want to be real. I want to be real about what we're actually doing every day. In case you haven't noticed, this isn't a pitch. It's a description. This is a description of what we're doing every day. So as we build forward, we want to bring people into rooms where we describe what we do without the drama. We do have drama, but yes. you're not here to see our drama. You're <laughs> here to learn how to make money. Do you really care about our drama? If you do, I can tell you about some. <laughs> 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 All right, construction from experience. Chip in at any point here, honey, because your, your knowledge okay, is... Okay, I'm chipping in. Do it. So in the very beginning, there are some big ticket items that you want to make sure that you order early on because of the lead time. That is garage doors, doors and windows, sliders, flooring. Right now, flooring is taking two to three weeks from anywhere you find it on the web. Flooring is taking a long time. Cabinets, countertops those bigger ticket items, those you need to order like day one or day two, or as soon as you get the bid back from the contractor, you want those ordered right away because they will hold up your project for weeks if you don't get them placed. I have one garage door in Indio. It's taken eight and a half weeks, and they're finally installing it today. Uh, but you, and you have to hound them. You have to call. You have to email. You have to text all the time. So for ordering materials early, that's what Something I'd say. Something that I watch Annette doing all the time is the second one. And oh. I'm telling you, it's literally, we're, you know, our mornings are crazy, you know. I'm up at the crack of dawn. Mornings? Jonathan, Jonathan's up at the, I'm just starting Like day. all the time. Jonathan's crazy. up at the crack of dawn, and she's sitting there on like 17 different websites. Literally, her tabs, I never see less than 20 tabs open on her. And she's constantly shopping, and this is a very important part. You can literally save 5% of your gross expenditure on a job just by having these regular supplies, uh, by shopping. And that's very, very good at it. Now, the regular suppliers in it also builds relationships with these suppliers. A lot of them, we can't even speak uh, you know, the, the language. Oh, I will hound them and call them. They all know me by my voice now, some of our suppliers, because I call them and then I praise them a lot and I appreciate them a lot. But um, like this morning, I dealt so with So I'm four the hammer, she's the feather. I'm <laughs> I dealt with four contractors before 9 o'clock this morning doing FaceTimes and things like that because I manage all the contractors, do all the scheduling, pick all of the selections, do all the design work, handle all the finances. I do all that all day long, and they are so wonderful people that I work with. But, yeah, and a lot of times when you're purchasing things, sometimes your schedule is we need to get done. We need to roll this out. We need to get it live and active on, on the MLS. So you might have to pay a little bit more to buy it on Amazon instead of one of your suppliers that takes three weeks later. And they might not have the design you're looking for, so you're constantly looking at all these different sites to make sure it fits the price, the budget, the time frame, everything. So I just want to interject here. Our raison d'etre, the reason we do this, is one, I want, Annette's brought something into my life I never, I never imagined that I would have. And we've been together 20 years now. And in the midst of that, 12 years ago, against nature and all the necessary precautions human beings take, along came Jonathan. And so now it's about her and it's about Jonathan. All I want to do is buy a nice car every two years. I'm happy with that, really. I would be happy, as you can see, buy all my clothes from Costco, I don't care. <laughs> but to see her happy and see Jonathan happy, and you know what's more than that with Jonathan? This is what really motivates me. So I grew up with a government employee in England. And I was no, not really close to my father, I was very close to my mother. So I've always been a provider for women because my mother was always worried about money. That's my like life story, right? So here I come to this country and I want Jonathan to have a better chance at life than I had. 
I want him to have the framework. Did you hear that? I want him to have the framework that he can build a model from what he learns from daddy. So this is all about creating that framework. When I pass, will he have a lot of money? Sure. But much more important, he will have an introduction to a system of thinking that he can do a hundred times more than me. So that's the motivation behind what we do. We're going to get back to construction in a minute, but would you with all of your hearts welcome the next CEO of Andy Buys Houses, Jonathan Warburton. How did your final go, son? How did the final go? Oh, my final went great. I just came from a science final, by the way. And coming here, oh, I'm in the car talking to Justin. Oh, I'm pumped, I'm pumped. I want to get on the stage and talk to these people. I want to get <laughs> the information. <laughs> so yeah, I'm excited. By the way, this is an absolute straight A student. Yeah. Yeah. So Sam, we're, we're talking, just whatever makes you comfortable, we're talking a lot about construction right now and how important the construction phase is in what we do. What are the aspects of the construction phase that strike you that we've shared together? Well, I love how we stay in tune with the contractors. All the, con all the contractors, we love staying in touch with them. Like one time or many times on all of our projects, we never say, oh, I'm going to ask for some pictures later, so make sure you have them. We text them on the dot and we're like, hey, can I have some pictures? And if they're not there and they're like, oh, we're at Home Depot or something, then they're not there. So you know how to shape them to get in line. And I really love that. And also, I heard you mention the blue tape. It's a leader. We, we go around multiple times in a job and mom does this and dad does this. We send them pictures of things oh, and we blue tape it or we even bring spray paint sometimes. And we give a detailed description of everything that they need to do to that. And on our, la on our last project, there were cords that were missing off of a fire alarm. And there were still a bunch of crappy things from the house that were still there. And yeah. I'm like, why are those there? So I said to Dad, you need to get them in line. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I'll do it the next time I see him, but he talks to him more. <laughs> and you know, he sounds really tough here, but he, he's so kind and gentle with these guys. But you know the line when Jonathan brings something up. Yeah. What about the construction? Think of some of the construction aspects at Terrace. I never forget that first time he came in and checked the smooth wall. Do you remember that? Oh, yeah. We always check the smooth wall because on one of them, we had it really messed up. And we just it took us a lot of money and a lot of time that we didn't have, and we needed to fix it. So. We learn from our mistakes, and yeah. So we decided to smooth wall the interior and exterior of Terrace, and we walk onto this job. He's 12 years old, and we walked onto the job, and he's down the corridor like this, running his hand down the corridor, and he goes, Dad, you, you're going to see this unevenness on the smooth wall. We need to fix this. This is the kind of stuff that he notices. Well, he goes with me, too, when I'm picking out items for the home, and I'll say, okay, Jonathan, here's our budget. Here's the design. Here's what's available. What do you think? And we'll go through and price and look. And he'll say, Mom, this one, this one looks good. I like this one. Oh, wait, that's way too much money. Let's find what else we can find. So he's really involved with learning budget, really, and what can fit within that budget for our project for finishes. So John, John, interject at any time you want. Let's, for the sake of your learning, I'm going to go to one more phase here. So there are two black bars across here that I want to urge you that you do in every project. Number one, make sure that you have weekly accountability reports with your contractors. In those reports, we require before we send the contractor money, so Annette sends the money every Friday or every Saturday, she requires that they send to us, what did you do last week? We want concrete report of what was completed last week. Because they'll tell you they painted the interior three weeks in a row. And they have to send pictures too. They can te they text us pictures explaining the steps that they've done. What did you do last week? And then we need them to commit to what they're going to do next week. Why is that? Because most contractors, by nature of the trade, they're handy type people. So they see what they see. They see the nail that is in front of their hammer. They see the wall that is in front of their paint device. 
That is a whole lot different to seeing the house a week from now and realizing you're part of that piece of art. So what we do is we try and focus the contractors on seeing the piece of art that they're creating. If we can achieve that, the level of the job goes up at least 25 to 30% in quality. The same, by the way, with agents who work on our team. We have agents who come in and know everything, they usually don't make it with us. There's other agents who come on and they want to learn, so we try and help them see where they can be, and when they can see where they can be, then they'll take those leads that we pour on them and so on and so forth. You have to see something different than where you are now. So with the contractors, what did you do last week? What will you do uh, next week? And reward them. When they do something right, reward them. I would really encourage you, you're gonna be in the flipping business, keep a few hun in your pocket all the time. Just do it. You have to keep the contractors happier, then they're not going to want to work for you. It's nothing like watching Jonathan walking up to one of the laborers, give him a hundred bucks. It's the coolest thing. And they're just floored. They don't know what to say. So it's that appreciating of people is really important. They'll do more for you. He has like handshakes with the contractors too. I mean, it's so cool when Jonathan comes out on the site. Yeah. It's cool. So when problems come up, oh, so weekly inspection, sorry. Keep the schedule on track. Any detail items, change items. Solve the problems swiftly. So problems are gonna come up. Challenges are gonna come up, but you didn't uh, anticipate, solve them quickly. Manage the money. Circle that a thousand times and write it on your pad. Manage the money. If it's a $60,000 construction project, you're halfway through it. They've received draws of $25,000. They want another $10,000. You're going to be at 35 out of 65. 60 or 65, did I say? You're going to be at 35 out of 65. You're not even halfway through. And they want over half the money. You've got a problem. And that's when you can run into a lot of issues. You get in a fight with the contractor. The contractor walks off the job. He in error files a mechanics lien, you have to call your attorney, your attorney severely warns him what's gonna happen to him if he doesn't remove it, but you just wasted a week of messing around that was completely unnecessary, it's on us. It's on us to manage the money. It's on us to manage the contractors. Never pay the contractor more than what they've done. In fact, you should always pay them a little bit less than what they've done. So you always want this hold back of 15% for the final inspection. And you heard before, so weekly accountability report, weekly inspection, make sure you do not do the final inspection as the final inspection. Can I say that again? Make sure you do not do the final inspection as the final inspection, right? Your final inspection is a pre-final inspection because you are 100% gonna go through that home and find 10 or 15 things that they've missed. A drain that doesn't drain properly, even though they've been there for five weeks. A cable wire from you know, last century satellite dishes that's still hanging off the side of the house. A piece of uh, dry rot on the rear right corner of the eaves where the sun rises <clears throat> that they missed. I, I could just go on and on and on. A ding in the tub, a crack in the caulk around Etc. 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 Make sure you find those things and you blue tape those things. And then comes final inspection and final payment. Is there anything you wanted to say on that, either of you? Okay, let's go to the next one. All right, this is our last slide. So what have we covered so far? We've covered acquisition. Is there anybody in this room who believes you can find flips for us that you will use our website to send them to us? Can I see anybody in this room? Yes? Three, four, oh, excellent. So make sure you have that QR code. By the way, we're in a buy mode right now. We are in a buy mode right now. So we are aggressively looking for properties. Patrick is literally looking at properties. I don't know if he's still here. He's looking for properties for us every day. Casey, right over here in the corner. This, where's Casey? He's also, he's right there. So if you want to talk to Casey about what's going on with buying properties for us, talk to Casey. Talk to Patrick if you see him again. We're aggressively, Rachel, where's Rachel? Is Rachel in here? Rachel right here. Rachel, aggressively looking for properties for us. We need to find properties. Acquisition is a huge part of this business. Construction, we're extremely lucky that we have such a gifted crew. And we're all learning together in it. But now comes disposition. So you bought it. You fixed it. Now you gotta sell it. And I'm gonna share some thoughts with you on disposition. You guys can chip in at any time. Some thoughts with you on disposition that are just practical things that to us are essential part of making profit. Number one, you need to continuously review the comps. I look at the comps every week throughout an, a construction project. Every week I'll look at them again and again and again. Why? Because if there's price erosion, I wanna be ahead of the curve, right? And if there's price accrual, if there's price gains, I want to be ahead of that curve as well. 
So you prep well in advance. Pre-market all of the homes with social media videos, reels, posts, boosts. So all of you in this room, I hope, will follow us on Facebook and Instagram. When you follow us on Facebook and Instagram, how many of you have had trouble finding inventory for your buyers? Can I see a show of hands? So the whole idea here is that you're going to know about that inventory before it hits the market. So if you're a real estate agent in this room, that's why a lot of realtors join our team is so they can be a part of that open housing those properties, meeting buyers, having a constant supply of properties. But pre-marketing, letting people know what you're doing. Don't be a secret flipper, right? Be a flipper in public. Next, pre-market your homes to realtors. Have a list of realtors. Use MailChimp. These are just basic business tools I'm sharing with you here. Constantly pre-market to realtors the properties that you have coming up. Build a relationship with good realtors. Okay? Build a relationship with good realtors. Use MailChimp. First weekend, you're going to market the property. Make sure you hold an open house. You've seen it on HGTV. It really does work. Get in there. Have some food. Have some goodies. Uh, somebody on our team usually is open housing that property. Be there. They often like to meet the people who've actually flipped it. And do you know how much time that saves you on the physical inspection? Because people have this drama mentality. Why? Because of YouTube. People making millions off YouTube. Have this drama mentality. You're a flipper, so you're doing everything on the cheap. We just, we just spent $92,000 on a house in Moreno Valley, right? You know how valuable it is to meet somebody in there and explain to them what we actually did? Now, is it a new house? No. But this particular house has a new heating unit, has a new air conditioning unit, has new windows throughout, has new plumbing throughout, has new electrical throughout, has a new kitchen throughout, has new courts throughout, has new vanities throughout, has new shower throughout, has new tile throughout, has new drywall throughout, has yard. new paint throughout, has a new fence around the backyard, has a new deck in the backyard. And this is one of 11 I can remember every single dollar. Now, when you, when you, uh, uh, this right here is another biggie look. Take pride, clean, clean, clean. Keep cleaning your houses. Take pride in those houses. Okay? Price up and stay in motion. So <clears throat> when you fix this house, there's a part of you that's going to be, oh boy, we really need money. And you're going to feel that. And you're going to want to pay Ryan off. And you're going to want to be moving on. And the danger there is to price the home too cheaply. Don't do it. Don't go crazy. All right? This isn't your firstborn. Don't go crazy, but price up because you can always, as you know, come down. But keep your price in motion. You know the age-old thing, why has it been on the market 30 days? There must be something wrong with it. So keep your price in motion, okay? By the way, pricing is going to change. There's still a chronic lack of inventory across the United States. We're still at historic lows in inventory. That can't change overnight because a YouTuber made a million dollars doing a stupid video, right? We're not about to change the imbalance of the distribution of housing in the United States in a week, a month, or a year. It's not going to happen. We are lacking housing, right? California, who's, which is, we're good on time, totally into the environment, is passing all these ADU laws because the powers that be actually know it is impossible to catch up with housing demand in the state of California. Did you know that? That's why these ADU laws are there. We literally cannot catch up. That's the issue. So <clears throat> price up, stay in motion. Offers management is a big part of this. So FYI, guys. I'd like to know how many of you do this as real estate agents, but you have an offer come in on a property. The first thing I do for my clients always is I create a Google Doc. I share that Google Doc with the client. On that Google Doc, I'll put down the name of the offering realtor. I'll put down the name of the buyer. I'll put down what their earnest money deposit is, how much down, what type of loan, how long the escrow is going to be, what contingency periods are going to be, whether it's an appraisal contingency or not, blah, 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 blah. It's like 14 columns on this Google Doc. Because if I'm getting nine offers, you can't remember, Brian. You can't remember as good and long as you've been in the business. You cannot remember all the criteria. And it's not necessarily the highest price that's the best one. Because when you, so do this Google Doc on your offers, okay? Use Google Doc. Make sure in those offers, I'm going to get down to something really important down here. Where is it right down here? It's down here somewhere. Right here. Office management. Google Doc. When you're in a transaction and you're selling that property, there are three parties that are absolutely crucial to your success. And most people will tell you it's the buyer. Most of the time, it's not the buyer. It's the buyer, it's the realtor, and it's the lender. I literally back check when people bring offers on our properties to see if the realtor's part-time. I handle hundreds of millions of dollars in my business. 
I believe the public has a right to expect me to treat it seriously enough that I'm full time. And to advise somebody on a million dollar decision between soccer games in my world is offensive. So I will always backtrack. I will see what that realtor is saying. Is it a wildly emotional realtor? I don't like wildly emotional people. Are they posting radical stuff online? I will not go into escrow with that person. I'll wait for another buyer. And you say, that's discriminatory. No, it's not. It's wisdom. It's my property. I want to know. Because when that physical inspection happens, the buyer doesn't know what's going on. And the guy who's done the inspection just earned himself $650 for two hours work for a certificate he got for $395 on a weekend in Vegas. And I'm going to let that person govern my dreams and my future? I don't think so. And if that realtor's part-time and can't get to the buyer until Monday because they've got four soccer tournaments, guess what? By Monday, you've lost that buyer. So I'm going to back search and I'm going to see, is this a serious realtor? Are they a hard-working realtor? How many buy sides have they closed? How many sell sides have they closed? Not what their flyer says, because we all know the flyers are full of lies. I want to go in, I want to see what have they done. Search MLS name, here's their registration number, how many have they sold, how many were buyer controlled, how many were seller controlled, therefore proportionally what is the likelihood they're going to close this escrow with me? Because you're going to escrow not just with the buyer, you're going into escrow with the realtor. And the next thing is you're going to escrow with the lender. Why? Because you shorten the contingency period to seven or ten days. That lender needs to get an appraisal. Well, to get an appraisal, he has to do the LE. Well, to do, sorry, this is real estate stuff now. I hope it's beneficial to you. To do the LE, that lender needs to know what the costs are because he has to disclose on the LE and he cannot have a gap, a difference between the LE and the closing disclosure. Therefore, he has to wait for escrow. Therefore, if escrow's part-time or if the lender's part-time and he's out taking pretty pictures of himself on the boat with his girl all over the weekend and on Monday he comes back and he's sunburned and on Tuesday he's recovering from the, the headaches of the weekend and finally he gets around to the cost, I just lost four days on on an appraisal. So I'm then going to need to issue a notice to buy to perform through no fault of the buyer. It's because they picked the wrong lender. They met him at church. Okay, that's wonderful. Church is wonderful, but it's not where you go for a lender. You go for the person. I don't go to the dentist. I have multiple teeth being changed in my mouth. I don't go to the dentist because he's from London. I don't go to the dentist because he's in my church. I go to the dentist because he's a bloody good dentist. <laughs> So it's exactly the same with a lender. Pick a lender who knows the ropes, who day one, first 24 hours, is going to get the costs, and he's not going to go home that night till he's got the costs from the escrow company so that he can issue the CD. Because when he's issued the CD, what can he do next? He can order the appraisal. So you can tell there's a lot of depth here, and I'm not going into that depth. But anybody just learned something? Yes? OK. Oh, so sorry. We're almost there, guys. All right, here we go. I'm not quite sure what happened there, and if you can make that big, that would be great. Look right. There you go. Thank you so much. So, short continues. Day one, here's this. Day one of escrow, when you're selling this property, make sure day one of escrow. Check and double check, Mr. Flipper, Miss Flipper, and make sure that lender has the costs and that they've issued that CD. Make sure it's happened. Call the lender of the buyer and make sure they've ordered that appraisal. Frank, you're smiling at me, you do it every day long, but people don't know that. And when you're flipping, it's your money. You're waiting for that $25,000 check, $30,000 check, the one you just saw, $80,000 check. You're waiting for that money so that Scott can invest it wisely so you don't have to pay the IRS as much. You pay what, legally what? there is, but you're, all those people are waiting, so make the right decision. Day one of escrow, make sure you're on top of it. Keep the escrow moving forward. This is a hard thing. Listen, you're in escrow, you've got contingency periods. Issue a notice to buy to perform on every single contingency you have. Every single one. You don't have to be a jerk about it, but you can just send it or have your transaction coordinator send it. Send that notice to buy to perform, and you're communicating. We're serious about this. We're in a contract. We understand you're busy. Thank you so much for bringing your buyer, and we're going to send you this notice to buy to perform just to let you know that it's coming up, and let's keep this thing on track, and we're going to have a wonderful closing <laughs> together, and we're all going to get paid, and God bless you very, very much. But make sure you keep your contingencies on track. Don't fool yourself you've got a buyer when you don't. Did you hear me? Don't fool yourself you've got a buyer when you don't. Stay on top of it. Put a per diem. I'm good. We're right at the end. Uh, your per diem. 
Write in all of your counter offers of per diem, 100 bucks a day, 150 bucks a day, 200 bucks a day. It's not the 100 bucks. It's the fact that not the buyer is put on notice, but their part-time realtor is put on notice. Put on notice that they're going to have to explain to their buyer why they're going to have to pay $500 more because it took them four days to come back from the boat in Havasu. Explain that to your buyer. It doesn't go down super well, right? So make sure you put a per diem in there. In your closing week, let's talk about closing week. Closing week is majorly important. Management of closing week, you have to see this. If your closing week takes one week extra and you do it 25 times a year, 25 divided by four is six. You've lost six months of production. If closing week takes you one week extra and you do 25 flips, you've lost 25 weeks. 25 weeks is six months of production. And you reach the end of the year and say, why didn't I reach my dream? Andrew said all I had to do was see. You did see, but you didn't follow the model. It said model, strategy, execute. All right. Closing week, daily checkouts with escrow, lender, and agents. Please write that down. Please don't take it for granted. And here's the bottom line. Treat people well. Go above and beyond, but always stay in the driver's seat. Because we live in basically an entitled environment, which is a socio-political thing that's happened worldwide, that sense of entitlement, Many, many people think they can just ask for another thing and another thing and another thing. You're not selling a new home. You're selling a reconditioned home that you've done the best you possibly can. If you come across a real estate agent or a buyer who is entitled, you have to draw the line and say, we really respect you. We're looking forward to you moving into the home. This is all that we've done. Please let us know within 24 hours if that's enough for you. If it's not, we respect you and we'll move on. By the way, here's the instruction to close, right? So make sure that you treat people well, stay in the driver's seat, but go above and beyond. Bottom line is this. You want to make half a million dollars a year flipping homes? You believe you can make half a million dollars a year flipping homes? Stick to the model and repeat, repeat, repeat. And I'd like to finish with this. It's about what you see. I'm probably more focused now on what I see at 65 than I was at 25. Because at 25, you think you've got forever. You can get into arguments with people. You can get into inflated situations with people. You can waste time gossiping with people. Now I realize that every minute that I gossip with somebody, every minute I even participate in an exchange on Facebook, I have stolen a minute from the jewels in my life. It's not worth it. What's worth it is devoting my brain my skills, my experience, building a team of significant people around us for the security, the stability, and the prosperity of my family and now yours. I hope you really enjoyed this. Just real quick before we end, there's a few things I wanna remind you of, but first of all, Let's give this family an amazing round of applause. And by the way, now I coach them. This is a real estate family. This is a couple who have gone into real estate. But what I want to do is show you your dream tomorrow. If you are on the Warburton team in any position, please stand up right now and give these folks a nice round of applause. They're all the way in the back, they're running. And these are the people that really, really make all of this happen. By the way, I want uh, to stand up a few more folks. Let's say thank you to my NHD for bringing all of our supplies and our food. Uh, let's give a round of applause for Old Republic Home Warranty. Thank very, you. very important. Ryan, please come back up with your staff, and I know some of your staff yeah. are running, come but on. give Ryan a nice round of applause. <laughs> he just left Dubai to come here for you. Billions and billions these people do. I want you to understand it's not about you. It's about the building of the team that you put together. I count it. Step up here, if you will. Give him a nice round of applause. <laughs> Thank you. 
And my name is Rick, and I helped Gary Keller build Keller Williams. That's not a plug. But I've also helped in 40 countries, well into the thousands of people, to net a million dollars a year in real estate. I want you to know you have someone in Temecula that can really help you build your business. If I'm coaching you, leading your team, or if I'm helping you to grow your business, raise your hand right now. Give all those people a nice round of applause. All right, folks, don't forget, we got a couple of things that we want to make sure we draw your attention to. Look at the QR codes, if you will. Look at the QR codes. The one on the left is where you're going to submit your properties. Make sure you take a picture of that and photograph it. Instagram and Facebook are the two in the center and on the right. That is where you're going to be contacting us to find out what is coming up. Did you learn anything? Very good. Just real quick. I'm looking for your aha. I'm looking for the, oh my gosh, this was fabulous. Anybody have an aha? This is where people get really quiet. It was great because I, I'm, I'm supposed to flip a, a, a property right now and I learned a lot. Thank you so much. You're welcome. You're welcome. These folks right here, that one in the middle especially. These folks right here have the answers that you are looking for right now, as well as all the folks that have the black Warburton properties that I had stand up. You are surrounded with a wealth of information and opportunity. If you'd like to know how much money these people have lost, they can tell you you need to follow a model and a system. Let's do some questions. You want some questions? Yeah, sure, sure. Let's take some questions. Would you like? Yeah, because I should have test, one minute. Test. I have one minute. Can we uh, ask any questions? Does someone have a question that you want to lead off with? Yes, hi. Hi, who are you? I haven't met you. Oh, yeah. Okay, I would like to know, um, you know, how you can fight a reliable construction. Uh, the contractor, yeah. So I can tell you how we do it is we constantly meet construction people. Literally, I'll drive by houses being flipped or remodeled, and I'll go in and I'll meet the contractors. It, most of these things are not tricks. They're regular habits, and so you just regularly meet people. Some of it will be referrals also. Uh, so anytime a contractor brings somebody in, an electrician, plumber, whatever, I'll make sure I meet that individual and get his name and number before he leaves the site. So it's constant integration with your current workers. And did you have something to add to that? No, I, I would actually just lean on the same thing. If, if you guys see a property that's being flipped, stop and actually talk to the to exactly. the, probably the project manager if there's one on site. If not, ask for a number and someone to call. That's probably the most common way. But at the same time, before you actually get that information, walk the property or kind of watch it first to see how they actually did and how fast they did it too, how many workers are there. That gives you an idea on the caliber uh, they are and how fast they work. Ryan, real quick. Give us the one biggest, biggest tip that you can give for folks who are now ready to play on this ball field. Don't be scared. Just dive in. That's probably the best way to say it. Your, your very first transaction, first of all, how many, how many people have flipped properties in here? How many people go over budget every time? <laughs> we do, every sorry. time. Yeah. So the bottom line is, is you're going to go in with an idea, and as soon as you go in there, depending on your wife and who's helping you, they're going to be like, we can move this wall. We can put this different material in. Bottom line is, right? So the bottom line is, is that you're gonna go into something and you just gotta keep going through it. It takes your first one, make it a learning experience. Don't expect to make money. Just expect to gain the knowledge on how to do it. That's probably the best way to go. But get in and do it. And again, surround yourself around the right people. That's literally, that's it right there. Scott, can you give us the best advice you can on someone who's in the real estate field, even as an agent or a buy, fix, and flip? What is that one thing that you would advise them as a CPA? The one thing I would advise is to have them meet with a, with a CPA or a planner, someone who really knows the business. I have well over 25 clients who are realtors. I've set up over 400 corporations and LLCs. Go to somebody who knows what they're doing. Give the proper advice. And everybody's situation is different. I don't give the same advice to every person. So it's catered to what they're doing, what their needs are, and what their goals are. Annette, your best one tip, if you possibly can. 
love on your contractors. Because if items are delayed or things are delayed, they're much happier to deal with that. Um, I think, yeah, everything else, there's always a challenge with everything. I will be quite honest with you. There's always one day, every day, that something will come in late or something will be broken. Um, and those challenges, you have to just really kind of let it go. But love on your contractors, and you'll take care of each other that way, and it'll be much a pleasant experience. And now for the, and now for the power of oh, the yeah, Warburton well. team, Jonathan, give us your best. Coordinate, coordinate, coordinate. N <laughs> never go in not planned, because if you go in not planned, you're going to be scrambling at the last second, and it's never good. You're going to lose profit, and your turnaround time is going to be way too long. And you want to get as much in in a year as possible to earn the two, one million. So <laughs> you got to do it quick. And you saw, guys, that there is a model. They taught you the model. And remember the week one, week two, week three? It's very important. You, sir, you heard what a week will add to everything. What we want to do is make sure that you stay on model, stay on schedule. How good are these guys at staying on schedule? They said you're out of here at 1 o'clock. Take a look at your watch. Thank you guys very much. It has been a pleasure on behalf of Warburton Properties.